Property ownership can obviously be a great way to build wealth. And with the right financial plan in place, you can not only benefit from the returns of wise investments, but also optimise your tax position to enhance your profits. While you may be a tax resident of the current country you're living in, it is important to understand that there are local obligations on real Australian property held as well. This includes tax on rental income from Australian property and also the capital gain at the time of sale. The tax rate applied to Australian taxable income or capital gains is determined by whether you are a resident for tax purposes in Australia for that financial year or a non-resident for tax purposes and a tax resident of a country outside of Australia. While Australia has double tax agreements with many countries, countries in Asia, Europe and America, likely meaning you avoid paying tax twice on the same income, it is important to understand the rules in your jurisdiction as well. As an Australian tax resident, your marginal tax rates are applied for all accessible worldwide income, including obviously for property, starting at the tax-free rate and increasing up to 45% plus Medicare levy. If you are a non-tax resident of Australia, your Australian property income and capital gains will be still accessible. However, the tax rates applicable are the non-resident tax rates on the right, starting at 32.5% and increasing to 45. Generally, there are, however, some strategies available to mitigate these tax implications. When purchasing a property for investment purposes, the related expenses are often able to be claimed as tax deductions to reduce the tax payable on your rental income. This includes loan interest costs on the associated mortgage. The term gearing refers to the level of debt used to fund a property purchase. Positive gearing is where the rental income being received exceeds the expenses and the cost of the borrowing. As mentioned in this instance, Australian tax will be applied uh, to the positive cash flow generated from the property and you can enjoy the net income after taxes. Neutral gearing, however, is where the costs, including that of the borrowing, uh, are the same as the rental income. This approach is where borrowing levels are increased to the point where the entire rental income is funding the costs. The benefit of this approach is that the increased borrowing allows for additional investment in, and in turn, potentially larger profits upon the sale of the property. Negative gearing um, occurs where the rental income you receive is less than the total costs or deductible expenses involved in owning that investment property. In this case, the borrowing level is increased even further for maximum investment into an investment property or portfolio of properties. This approach can be a little bit more complex However, the tax optimization can be increased even further. From the example here, you can see the cash flow is in a negative position. So there will be uh, a need to fund uh, the ongoing expenses from an additional source. Although this negative cash flow amount can be used for tax purposes. In Australia, this tax loss may be used to offset other Australian income, such as your employment income. However, living offshore, you're able to accrue these net income losses each year as carry forward tax credits. These carry forward tax credits can then be used at a later date to offset potential capital gains on the future sale of the property or income when you return to Australia, including employment income. We'll demonstrate how these tax credits uh, can be carried forward to utilise to reduce future capital gains tax and we'll come back to this um, briefly. In addition to managing borrowing levels and investment to achieve tax optimization, there are strategies relating to superannuation that can either further even reduce your Australian tax obligations. Certain contributions to superannuation can also be claimed as tax deductions to further reduce your tax obligations. These are referred to as concessional contributions and allow you to use the tax credit similar to that of the tax deductible expenses we discussed previously. There is an annual cap of 25,000 per annum, which increases from 1 July this year uh, to 27,500. 
However, these contributions can be made on an annual basis to reduce your Australian tax obligations and enhance your overall tax position. Further to this, people with superannuation balances of less than 500,000 who have not utilised their concessional cap from previous years may actually bring forward unused amounts up to the contribution caps. The unused concessional cap can be accumulated over several years and can be triggered single year for the full tax deduction. This can be a useful strategy to, to maximise the deduction of taxable capital gains events. As mentioned previously, tax credits in previous financial years can be accrued and carried forward to offset future tax obligations, including capital gains tax. Carry forward losses can be maximised in any given year through strategies such as negative gearing and claiming losses as depreciation and other eligible deductions. Holding the property over a number of years may accumulate losses to offset the gain at the eventual sale. Here is an example of accruing these over several years to mitigate the, the net capital gain. As you can see here, through a strategy of maximising both carry forward losses in addition to triggering uh, or in applying the eligible catch up concessional contributions, you may potentially decrease your capital gains tax significantly at the sale of the property. From combining the strategies from the two previous examples of utilising carry forward losses of 50,000 plus making an eligible catch up contribution um, utilising the catch-up contribution provision, totaling 75000 here the investor has saved himself over $56,000. <clears throat> From a risk protection perspective, it is also important to ensure that your family are adequately protected in the event of an unforeseen illness, accident or death. If you are borrowing to purchase an illiquid asset such as property, it is absolute importance that you have adequate insurance in place, particularly if you have a family. <clears throat> you need to consider both the appropriate types of colour uh, that you have in place and the right levels based on your financial position and needs. It is important to consider which providers are suitable um, and which country that you're in taking out the insurance if you're currently living in a country outside of Australia. For Australian expats with cover within superannuation, it is also important that this is reviewed um, to ensure your fund does not become dormant, uh, which can result in a loss of cover. Quite often Australian insurers also have territorial exclusions um, on disability cover for Australians living abroad. This can potentially preclude claiming a full insurance benefit in the event of a claim while living overseas. It is important again to um, review your existing cover here to ensure that there are no potential exposure from a, from a risk perspective. Um, the other part of risk management is depending on whether the complexity of your financial plan, um, whether you need to review your will. If you own assets in more than one jurisdiction, it is often advisable to have separate wills uh, addressing assets in each country or jurisdiction, um, particularly in the case where, the, where there's real property ownership. A will is an important tool um, to ensure there's specific, specific guidance for state management for larger and li less liquid assets, including property. Um, where often there's need for managing debts, um, split ownership of beneficiaries, etc. Further to this, while, whilst a will deals with physical assets and a state plan considers your total wealth, including superannuation, which is dealt outside of your will, guardianship, business interests, um, and who, we, who will control your finances should you lose mental capacity. The best way to understand your risk protection and estate planning needs is to speak to an advisor. <clears throat> 